Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Jubilee Lipsy, the uh, biblical fiction author of Of Sheaves and Stars and the trilogy My Brother the King. And last week on Instagram and Facebook, I posted about why I do book highlight videos for all these novels. I just finished the videos for Of Sheaves and Stars and I've done them for all my books. Now, if you're unfamiliar, what I do is I go through my novels chapter by chapter to sort of highlight the deeper meaning, the application of what's going on and how it applies to us, the takeaways and the implications of what's being talked about. Basically, what does it do for us to have a character-based look at these stories? So after finishing the book highlights for Of Sheaves and Stars, I wanted to remind people why I go through all the work of doing those. Doesn't the meaning just come through in the novel? Well, yes, hopefully it does, because I've built each book on the foundation of the questions I posted about last week. How has this story transformed me personally? What was God teaching the main character? And what does God want us to learn from it? Now, I believe these should be the foundational questions behind every biblical fiction novel, because otherwise all you have is the narrative skeleton of what happens. And honestly, biblical fiction is way too much work and way too important to just paraphrase the story. That's not needed. I've mentioned before that I don't pick these stories at random. I have to be gripped by it or drawn to answer a deeper question. There has to be something I feel called to figure out and discover and then get excited enough about it to give it away. That's the main reason I dive into a character driven story like this is because there's something motivating enough about it to make me do that. And then I want to inevitably share what I found, what God has taught me. Honestly, I wouldn't write biblical fiction otherwise. Um, I wouldn't write anything for publication unless you experience that because that's what it's all about. You don't want to make the mistake of assuming that you can just skip your responsibility because it's a common Bible story that everyone knows. First of all, biblical literacy is at an all-time low in our nation right now, so that's not a fair assumption anymore. And even Christians get familiar and need to be reminded why this story matters. Plus, like I said, I'm not just rewriting a Bible story. I'm inviting people to experience it alongside the characters from the inside out by the way I write. So it's an experience that has to be buoyed by the underlying truth that I'm drawing, that I'm trying to draw out. Romans 15 is my favorite scripture about this and talking about how the Bible stories were given to us for our instruction so that we may abound in hope. So if you're not helping people do that in a new way or uncover something that's already there, then then why do it? So in light of all that, I wanted to, I posted those questions that lead my experience, both the one I have in writing it and the one I give away through publishing and book highlights. And now I want to share what my answers to those questions are, starting with my most recent novel. And I would love for you to comment and let me know what your answers would be, what you took away from the novel or the book highlight videos. But speaking of, of Sheeps and Stars, I'm going to start with how this story transformed me, because I honestly can't remember a time when I wasn't gripped by the life of Joseph in Genesis. From a very young age, for some reason, it was sort of a commissioning. It was just on me and it became my constant companion, something I lived alongside and I would step into it in order to learn to live out my faith as I was growing up and needing sort of training wheels for appreciating the faithfulness of God. We can see the whole story, but Joseph didn't when he was going through it. And I was so fascinated by someone who was this gifted and privileged, and then he had to weather so many heart-wrenching disasters and then see such earth-shaking faithfulness of God come through at the end. But all the while, he didn't have the ending and he had to push through it. But because I have the ending, I would sort of borrow his courage and exist within his story, living out his faith when I needed it. And that was my childhood. I had just endless questions and dreams and inspiration, and I let my imagination run wild. And then I got deeper into more serious research as I grew older, and it all finally culminated. I had to write it all down. And even then, it took a while to decide what all would be needed and drill down to what I felt God was saying through my experience of this story. And now that I've released what God's built up inside me through this book, there's an empty space, but I get to live out those lessons in my adult life now. The main one being God has a purpose for your life that is so much bigger than what you see, and it doesn't change because circumstances are bad. Joseph continued to live with God and in God no matter what happened. He continued to live on the firm foundation of who God was and the fact that God was with him, and that changed everything. Now, on the subject of what God was teaching Joseph and what we can learn from it, God gave Joseph dreams, and like all of us do, Joseph initially thought that was everything. 
and he drew up a whole plan in his mind about what it would look like and he assumed that it would unfold in the context of his childhood home life. But we all tend to forget that what God gives us while valuable is only one piece of the puzzle and he has the rest of the pieces. And those pieces connect us to the rest of the body of Christ, the rest of the world and God's larger ultimate purpose. He has a purpose for us that connects with all of that. Our dreams are not just about us. And the best and only way really for us to live that out is through him. And while that's hard to understand sometimes, it's also encouraging because when things are not working out the way we wanted for the outcomes we would like, we can remember that God has a bigger plan and he won't abandon us. We can always pursue him, even if it means that we have to temporarily walk away from something we wanted. For a long time, Joseph had to learn to set aside his desire to be a free man and go back home to his family in order to pursue God in a foreign land that had enslaved him. And if he could do that, we can too with the help of the Holy Spirit. This is what I learned from living alongside Joseph in this story. And this is what I hope I've given away to all of you through the novel and the book highlight videos. Joseph's story was not easy. And I loved getting the chance to drill down to the the raw, rough details that we often overlook. But he was willing to stick with God and see his story through to recognize that it wasn't the end. I hope at the very least you'll go back to the Bible story and read it again with fresh eyes and offer your story up to God with fresh surrender and anticipation, knowing that it may not end with you ruling Egypt, but God has a plan for you that exceeds your plan for yourself and it's worth living it out with him. Anytime we feel discouraged, the best thing to do is take our eyes off ourselves and remember that just like Joseph, God knows what we're going through. Jesus was a man. He knows what it was like to walk out life on earth while being committed to God's plan. We can safely put everything we need in his hands and trust him enough to step out beyond the beginning section into the area where there's opposition and adventure and growth and the metal of our dreams is actually tested We need to stand firm on God and continually exist in him because that will make all the difference, abiding in the Lord. And I pray that you've been encouraged and inspired by all this, and I hope to see you back for more.